What's going on guys, it's Houston Sports Hub back to another video today and today the Houston Rockets lost the Golden State Warriors 133-110. to I was at this game and this was a tough one, it, it really was. Um, after, you know, feeling so good about being one game back from the Golden State Warriors and being on that 11 game winning streak, now the last three games, you know, we've lost three games and Golden State is on a hot streak and it would take a pretty big miracle for the Rockets to to somehow, uh, you know, come back. Six games left. Six games left for both teams. Rockets have, have a hard schedule. The Warriors don't have an easy schedule, but it, you know it's a lot more easier than the Rockets do. The Warriors do have some hard matchups, like facing the Lakers and the Mavericks in Dallas. So, um, you know, they don't have the Pelicans as well. So, you know, it's obviously not like. The Warriors have the, an easy schedule, but compared to the Rockets, it's easy because they face, I believe it's the Jazz twice, and then the Blazers are their easy games. Now, the Rockets as well, I believe they play the Jazz one more time, and they play the Blazers one more time, but they do have hard games like the Clippers, the Magic, the Heat, and the Mavericks. So, um, I think both teams have you know fairly hard games left in the season, but... The Rockets have more, you know, harder match matchups, you know, in the, in the next six games than the Warriors do, and really, we're four games back right now, but really five. The Warriors hold the tiebreaker, beating them in all four matchups this season. So, you know, if if you know, let's just say the Warriors, you know, end out the season on a slump, and the Rockets are you know, playing really bad or really good to end the season. And they, they have the same record at the end of the season. Golden State's still going to be in the play because the Warriors hold the tiebreaker, which is huge. But um, So the Rockets need to have a better record than them to make the play in. Essentially, the Rockets would have to win, win out, basically. And they'd have to win out and hope that Golden State goes 1-5 the rest of their games. You don't need Golden State to, to, to win every single game left. That they have now, uh, if you're gonna lose one, you 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 would want Golden State to to lose out. But there is a way for the Rockets to make it in the plan. It is a definite long shot. They need to finish out with all wins the rest of the season. They need to finish out on a six game winning streak, and they need Golden State to drop five out of their next six games. To me, it sounds impossible, especially when three of those games are against the Jazz and the Blazers. You need the Jazz. But, you know, you know how the, the Pistons had Malachi Flynn turn into something special the other night, and they didn't even win? You know, they, the Rockets would need the Jazz or the Blazers to have someone who turned you know, into into someone special to beat the Warriors because they're hot right now. Clay's playing great basketball. Um, Steph's playing good basketball. He's been a little inconsistent. He was good tonight for the Warriors, but in the in, you know before he has been a little bit inconsistent. But when Clay's the, playing the way he's he you know he played tonight, Steph doesn't need to go out there and you know have his best night. Steph did have a good night tonight. He had twenty nine six and six, but you know it, Steph's last game before that he had seventeen and fourteen. You don't need Steph to go out there and go over twenty points to win. Their last game before this. Uh, they played Dallas, and guys like Wiggins and Clay had big games against uh, against Dallas. And even though Steph didn't play the best offensively, didn't shoot well from three, didn't shoot well from anywhere, and you know was you know doing other good things for the Golden State Warriors, like getting good you know getting a bunch of assists. Warriors still were able to beat Dallas by four, even though Steph struggled because Clay and Wiggins were playing so good. I think they they come you know they went. Over forty five points together. I know Wiggins had twenty three. I think I think Clay had over twenty two as well. But uh, so yeah, when Clay's playing the way he's playing right now, seven for eleven from three, uh, eleven for fifteen field goal, zero for zero at the free throw line, three rebounds, four assists. Look, Clay turns it on when he's playing the Rockets. I don't know what the deal is when Clay. Whenever Clay's playing the Rockets, he is on fire. It's you know. Steph too. I mean, Steph would Steph didn't shoot great from three tonight. Shot two for six. Um, surprised me that he didn't take more three pointer attempt three point attempts in this game. He didn't shoot bad though. Shot nine for fourteen. But but Clay shot. He was on fire. He was not missing tonight. Only missed four shots. Eleven for fifteen. I want to talk about Trace Jackson Davis for Golden State though because he was great for them. Uh, Twenty points, five rebounds, 
four assists. He dominated the Rockets in second chance. If you look at a lot of his rebounds, are, or not a lot, a good part of his rebounds are offensive rebounds, uh, two offensive rebounds. He gave the Warriors a lot of second chance you know, points in this game, um, and he dominated the Rockets. I think seeing how we saw Trace Jackson dominate in this game for Golden State, and you know he dominated the Rockets paint in the paint is it it shows how much the Rockets miss Sengun. Look, I think Jackson Davis would have had a good game if Shingun was healthy, but still to the fact that I think Shingun, if he was healthy, he would be able to stop Jackson Davis a little bit more. I think, you know, not really having a rim protector kind of really hurts you in those situations when Jackson Davis is you know, is is dominating like he was tonight and eight for ten shooting. I think adding in a guy like Steven Adams who we traded for at the trade deadline next season Seeing what we saw for Jay Stacks and Davis tonight, knowing that Steven Adams is going to be able to stop players like that who are just going to dominate you in the paint, is going to be great to have a guy like Steven Adams next season. I know Jock's played you know fairly well um, since you know Shingu got hurt, but most likely he's not going to be in the rotation next year since Steven Adams is on the team. But I, I think adding in a guy like Steven Adams, a great rim protector, is going to be great next season. And as the next couple games go by, I can't wait for next season. Um, you know, it's not like, it's not like last season where like last season I had this feeling like, can we just get this season over with? Can we just like, like last year I was ready for the season to be over 15, 20 games before it actually was this year. I'm, I'm happy for these next six games, even though knowing we're not going to make the plan most likely unless a miracle happens. Um, but you know, I know that this team has played fairly well. The Rockets could end the end the season on a nine game losing streak. They're already on a three game losing streak. They could lose the next six games. I don't care. I, I really don't. I'm my, they have already exceeded my expectations for them. Look, I would have liked a play in appearance. I really would have. But most likely, in all odds, they're going to finish as the eleven seed. Utah's not going to catch up to them. So they went out of you know out of. Being to the 15 seed, the worst team at second second worst record in basketball, all the way to the 11 seed, and giving themselves a fighting chance to potentially knock off one of Stephen Curry and the Warriors or LeBron James and the Lakers to potentially make the plan. I think that's a huge jump, and not only that, uh, if the season ended today, they didn't or they didn't win any more games the rest of the season. They they still have improved their win total by 16 total wins this season. And there still probably will be a couple more wins. Out of the next six games, I think I see the Rockets going 3-3. Three and three. Um, I, I really do see them finishing an even 500, 41-41. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see the Rockets going over 500. I see them either being at right, right at 500 or one game below 500. I see them getting either to 40 or 41 wins, which is amazing because if you think about it, that's either 18 or 19 wins more than you had last season. So, look, no one, no Rockets, no Rocket fan should be disappointed in this season from the Houston Rockets. And if you are, get the hell out. I mean, because I am so proud of this team. I'm so proud of, you know, where they've, you know, where, you know what they've done compared to the previous seasons. And also the fact that they went on an 11-game winning streak, and a good part of that was without one of their best players in Alperen Sengun. But I want to get to the Rockets scoring. I felt bad that I kind of went to the Warriors first, but they did kind of dominate the Rockets tonight. But for the Rockets, I mean, look, t- tonight they played – I'm just going to get straight to it. I, I praise the Rockets. I praise how proud I am, proud I am of them. So now I'm going to bash them. They played terrible tonight. It's okay because it, this was a – determined Warriors team and look I'm gonna I'm gonna blame a little I'm gonna a player I'm gonna blame a little bit is a player who didn't even play tonight I'm, I'm gonna I love him and I can't wait to have him back next season but Tari Eason I mean the Warriors come out and play a video I think we just you just I, I, I said it I said it when you know I talked about how the Warriors are coming after the Rockets. They were one game back I was excited about it I talked about the Rockets potential chances and what I thought could happen for the Rockets, and I said, I my I like the Rockets' chances less with that with that Tari Eason video because I just when I saw that video, I felt you know these two teams they play each other. This is gonna wake the Warriors up, and it it, it kind of did. And 
It didn't just wake them up tonight. It didn't just wake them up in this game. It woke them up before taking out Dallas, Charlotte, San Antonio. They have been hot recently, winning what their like their last three or four games. So now I think their winning streak is at four, if not it's five now. Um, but basically, what my point is is that I think the winning streak is four now after this one against us. But my point is is I think that video really woke the Warriors up, and I expected them to, to come out swinging tonight, knowing that, you know, the Rockets poses a threat to them, and, you know, I think the Rockets had to match that energy that Golden State was going to bring out early, because they, they did bring it early. They shot well early, they played well early, they played good defense early, and the Rockets didn't match that at all. Uh, first quarter, they got scored 33-24, to 24, and and that that's, be, you know, they're only down nine because they made a big come back at the end of the quarter they brought it down to like eight i believe or they brought it down to like six it was like 30 to 24 and then i think chris paul hit a three but you know the rockets were down like 13 at some point in early on in that first quarter they just got off to a slow start and um eventually at halftime they found themselves down 15 down found themselves down 16 at the end of the third quarter so you know this tough luck in this one Honestly, if the Rockets would have got off to a better start in this game, matched the energy that Golden State was bringing early on, maybe this would have been a closer game. I'm not saying the Rockets would have won, but maybe the Rockets would have been closer in this matchup, but they didn't. They shot terrible from three. This is third straight game. They shot terrible from three as they were shooting well from three before. Um, 12 for 40, 30%. Look, don't, don't stop shooting the basketball. But Golden State only took 35 attempts, but they shot 48%. Stop shooting the basketball. It's not working. I know you're down. You want to you know, bring that lead down. But take smarter shots to bring that lead down. Stop shooting the three. You know, I'm all down for shooting the three to try to get yourself back in the game. But if you're not, if the shots are not falling, stop shooting them. I was fine with Jabari shooting the three. He was having a good night from, from three. He shot four for ten. Uh, Jalen, not so much. I mean, he did make some shots tonight, but shot three for eight. Van Vliet was not knocking it down tonight for the Rockets. He was 0 for three. Rooks was all right with two for six. Obviously, Amin didn't take any threes. Um, Cam, not good at all. One for six. Jeff Green was 0 for three. Aaron Holiday was good from the outside night, which he usually is, two for four. So I just don't know why the Rockets kept shooting the ball like that. Um, no. But I th- I just thought too much three-point shooting this game for the Rockets. Um, yeah. should have You should have drive more. They, they did, you know, take a, a lot of twos in this game. I mean, they took 86 total field goals, so they took uh, 46 you know, non-threes in this basketball game. But uh, I just think there sometimes I watch this team, maybe you'd be a little bit closer in some of these losses if you shot, the, you know, shot three, shot the three ball a lot less. And I think going into next season when you're looking at improving this team, look, if you want to shoot the ball 40 times a game, bring in some decent shooters. Look, I've talked about how Jokic has good three-point shooters around him. Look how many good three-point shooters Jokic has to get the ball to. The Rockets need to get that for Alperen Sengun. I don't really see that for the Rockets, you know, a lot. Look, you have a really, I really like the three-point shooting ability of Jabari Smith Jr. He had a good shooting night tonight, shot 40% from three. Uh, Fred is, in my opinion, inconsistent from three. He's a good three-point shooter, but he's inconsistent. And a lot of his three-point shots that he does make, is him creating his own shot. And same thing goes for Jalen. He is an all right three-point shooter, but a lot of the three-point shots that he does make are him creating his own shot. I will give him some credit. He does make down some you know, catch-and-shoot threes, but I would say if you look at all of his threes this season, probably a good 75 to 80% of those threes, if not more, are him creating his own shot. Um and he only had 13 points and 7 assists tonight, but only played 30 minutes. And uh, so I just, Dylan is, you know, I think same thing goes with Fred. Uh, same thing goes with Fred. Dylan is an inconsistent shooter, but Dylan can knock down good shots for the Rockets. I think Dylan is a is a good shooter, just like Jabari for Alperen Sengun to get the ball to. But outside of Dylan Brooks and Jabari Smith Jr., I don't really see a lot of good three-point shooters in, in, you know, on this team. I guess I would say Cam Whitmore. I think he's a good three-point shooter. But I think there's really only three guys that, you know, are good, e- efficient three-point shooters. And I'm saying that as Cam Whitmore shot one for six tonight. But, you know, he just returned. He, he's not been healthy. But, you know, 
Uh, I think that's something the Rockets need to prove on this offseason. If you, know, you want to build around Shangoon, he's your he's your franchise guy. Build some shooters around him. Sign some guys who are you know who can make tough shots. If you know for Shangoon to get the ball to, because I really see only three guys right now who can knock consistent shots down for the Rockets, and that is Jabari Smith Jr., Dylan Brooks, and Cam Whitmore. Um, and I, you know, that's that's just talking about the aspect of the as the that's just talking about the look of it where Shingoon is getting the ball to these shooters. Um, I know Jalen is, you know, he can get buckets for you. He's a good bucket getter, but his offense is him getting his own buckets. You know, he's he's creating his own baskets. So um, that's why I didn't include Jalen in the list because uh, you rarely see Jalen, you know. You rarely see Jalen, you know, you rarely see someone else, whether it's Fred or Shangun or someone else, someone else on the team, create the shot for Jalen. Jalen's going to create the shot for himself. And that's fine. Some guys need the ball in their hands when getting a good shot in. So, um, yeah. So, to basically recap the scoring for the Rockets, 24 points for Jabari Smith Jr., 13 points for Jalen Green with 7 assists, only 30 minutes. Jabari played 32. Fred had 10 points with 9 assists, 1, one uh, assist away from a... Double double, five steals for Fred though in this game, two for seven. I don't know his field goals have been down recently. Seventeen points for Cam Whitmore, four rebounds, six for fourteen, one for six. He had a crazy. Him and Amin Thompson had a crazy alley oop in this game. Amin Thompson. Speaking of Amin Thompson, he had eight points with four rebounds in thirty minutes. Eight points for Jeff Green. Uh, eight points for Jock Lando with six rebounds in fifteen minutes. Shot four for five. I thought he had a nice game as well for the Rockets, and you know that's really it for this game. Let me know your thoughts on the game for the Rockets in the comment section, and peace out, Rockets.